Hi there. Well, I thought it was about time I did a review of this Proxon Micro Mini milling machine that I bought recently. I haven't had it uh, a long time, just a couple of months, and just done a, a few small jobs with it. But I thought it'd be nice to do a review because I couldn't find any reviews at all when I was thinking of buying this. Now this is the FF250 stroke BL milling machine by Proxon and they are made in Germany. Now it took me ages to decide on what milling machine to get. I spent literally a huge amount of time looking over different specifications and I guess really it comes down to three things when you're choosing a machine like this. First one, you need a machine that's going to be big enough to do the projects that you're working on. Most of the work I do is fairly small, small diesel engines or spark ignition engines, making components, things like that. I, can't, I don't envisage myself doing anything really big. But I'm sure there will come an occasion where this isn't big enough. But anyway, the second thing is obviously budget. You, I, I, I haven't got a limited budget, as I suspect most people watching this. You want to get the best you can for the money you can get. Now these, I can't remember exactly how much I paid for this, but they're about a thousand pound sterling. So they're not cheap, but they're not as expensive as some of the milling machines that you can get. And the third thing is space. Now, my workshop is not a bad size, but I do have space limitations. And I really didn't have room for a big milling machine, a nice old industrial one. Um, so I wanted to get something small and I can actually pick this up. I've got a shelf just behind the camera there where I keep a lathe and I keep this. And it's quite heavy, but I can pick it up and move it. I still, oh, <laughs> just get the oil off my fingers. Um, I still need to make a bit of a base for this, but I don't want to make anything too big or, or I don't want to bolt it to the table because as I say, I want to be able to move it and store it. And I'll show you a little bit of machining in a minute that I've done with this. And to be honest, I don't notice any problems with just having it like this. Um, and not bolted down. I'm sure if I'm doing particularly fine work then it might make a difference. I'm very new to machining with um, milling machines so I'm on a really steep learning curve. But I, I, like I say, I've only done a few projects with this and it's great having it portable. Now as far as the actual kind of specifications of this, it weighs, according to the manual I've got open here, 9.5 kilograms and so it's a decent weight but it's not lightweight and a lot of it is like the bed here you can see I've got a magnet is cast iron the the base is cast iron and the the um, uh, turret or whatever you call this is steel and so it is a fairly solid construction and I'm really pleased with that. Some of it is aluminium, this is aluminium, this is aluminium, but you've got enough weight there, I feel anyway, to uh, to really make this kind of uh, robust and uh, doesn't vibrate a lot. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a couple of other specifications for this and then we'll take a closer look. Uh, it says it's got X uh, traveler direction in X direction, 170 mil, it's got 60 mil in the Y direction, so I guess that's 170 mil side to side, and uh, what was it, 60, forward and backwards. And uh, the speed, it's got a digital readout on the front, which we'll have a look at in a minute, and it's from 400 RPM up to 6,000 RPM. And I'll be honest with you, I was really surprised how quiet a machine this is. I expected something that I'd probably want to put earplugs in or something like that but actually it's really nice and it's got a lovely soft start. Okay well we have a few different levers and controls and we've got this lever on the back here with a, an indexing point here which we can set to zero. If we take off the locking lever we can move the head up and down for different heights. So if we take that up a bit 
it's nice and smooth, it feels lovely and very little play in it if any, feels really nice. We've got a, an Allen screw here which allows us to actually rotate the head so if we had a piece of work in the vise we could come in and mill at 45 degrees say or at any other set angle. Now just as I'm mentioning the vise it's a, an American made Sherline vise, Sherline? Yeah I think it's Sherline and it's a, five, a 3551 and it's not the cheapest vise they're quite expensive but they are really really nice it is absolutely lovely and I saw this recommended on another channel so so it's not a Proxon vise it doesn't come with a vise it does come with some hold up, hold down clamps but I really felt I needed uh, needed a good vise now the other thing we've got is we've got this lever here and this we can use for milling up op milling options or drilling options um, and it's got a depth stop on it so that we can um, just make sure that we don't over drill or mill what we want now and of course there's a locking lever on that to tighten all this down we've got the controls here for taking it uh, sideways, side to side and uh, these are lovely and smooth they've got zeroing on them as well and uh, the same with the forward and backwards. As I said I'm on a really steep learning curve not only with milling but with this machine as well. Now if we have a look at the controls on the front it's very simple we've got a switch on and off and we've got a digital readout of the speed and it's a really I'm going to come around to the other side here so I can see that better. Now it's got a, a soft start as I said earlier There we go, and now we're on 2000 RPM and we can take that up to 6000. At 6000 it, it does just move a little bit from 5900 to 6000, 6001, but um, if we turn it off and again let's see the soft start at that speed, which is really nice. And you probably can't tell with this video because the um, because of the way the, the, the sound works on the recording, but this isn't loud at all. It is really nice, and this is a lovely fine adjustment, 3,200 there, and it does hold that speed, irrespective of milling. I was uh, I was cutting this uh, yesterday, and uh, it, it the speed I was on about 2,000 RPM and uh, I'll show you that in a second and it didn't alter the speed at all so it's, it doesn't seem as if it's lacking in power one little bit. Well up till now I've been really pleased with the performance of this it's done everything that I've asked of it and I, I mean when I bought this I bought some a box of Proxon uh, milling bits here with 5 mil one is in there because I've just finished doing a job on it and I thought rather than uh, a steep learning curve not only about milling bits but also about milling machines I would get the, the, the bits that they supply with this or actually they're not supplied you have to buy them extra but they are designed for the machine but I'm sure as I move on I'll be looking into perhaps carbide milling bits different numbers of flutes um, two flutes or four flutes so that is another learning curve for me so I thought I'd just get these as a starter pack if you like. Now this is what I've just been working on and you can we'll have a closer look So just a, a, a really simple milling job that I did yesterday and it would have been better if I didn't have to turn it over so I, uh, to mill out the uh, the whole piece because of the thickness and the, the Proxon milling uh, cutters I had I had to do that so ne I, that was a good learning curve for me 
So next time I would buy a longer milling bit so I could do it all in uh, all in one go. Well, not the cuts all in one go, but from all one side. So we've got my knurling wheel, just goes on there. I've got the pin. And now all I need to do is drill a hole in that side and put a little grub screw in. And, uh, and there we have what I made yesterday. So there we go. So as you can see, this is just a, a really simple project uh, for my lathe. And I could have bought one probably, but I just thought it'd be nice to make my own. I'm still going to blue this and uh, give it a little bit of a finish just to make it look really nice. But I am really pleased with this milling machine. I was really nervous when I was choosing one and particularly when I ordered it because I didn't know what to expect and whether it would just be a little bit light and a little bit flimsy. But as I said I am really pleased with this and I'm sure it will do 99% of the projects that I ask of it. So for me it was a good buy and when I was trying to choose a milling machine I couldn't find any reviews from this uh, for this which kind of didn't help in the selection process but these are I, I understand these are actually made in Germany which uh, for me was a kind of a, a good sign that it would be good quality so anyway this is the FF 250 stroke BL milling machine from Proxon and uh, I'm really pleased with it. So I'm going to draw this video to a close now and I hope you found it useful and I hope it will uh, help you make decisions about what milling machines to get. There are so many different choices out there and as I said it needs to be able to be big enough, you need to be able to afford it and you need to have the space for it. And for me this seems a perfect solution. Thanks very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it.